was it really like to be an entrepreneur? Well, I think entrepreneurship is like 90% bad and, or like 95% <laughs> bad days and like 5% like great things that happen, right? Or not bad days, but like 95% like struggling and like 5%, oh, you got like a New York Times article or you close your financing or something good happened. The thing is that like on Facebook, you just post those 5% of like good things, right? Mm -hmm. So it like gives us very, you know, kind of a unrealistic view of like what you're actually doing um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Most right. of the time you're dealing with like things you don't want to do, like managing your employees or like dealing with like problems that they, that come up, right? Like it basically you're running from emergency and crisis to crisis. Like the site went down, you can't scale, you're like customers are leaving, deserting you in droves, you're like running out of money and you're going to die if you don't raise money and so you have to go and beg dozens of VCs to like invest in you. Mm -hmm. Those are all the things that people like talk about only when they're already successful which is, I guess is what's happening now. Right. Uh, but most of the time they're not talking about it. Most of the time they're posting like all the like fun things that happen on Facebook. Right. And one, one of the images that really stuck in my mind with our talk before we started here was this vision of the desert. And yeah. You refer to entrepreneurship as sort of this slog through the desert. So I'm wondering if there's a story that comes to your mind when you think about sort of the dark times of wading through that mud in the desert. I mean, there's like lots of, it's not so much one, usually when you ask someone about like, um, entrepreneurship. I don't think there's like one like time when it was like um, hor I mean, there are often times like these few horrifying times. I think I told some of the stories out there, but um, mostly it's like these small things that are like just horrible, uh, you know, kind of like stressful. And then it's like the accumulation of them happening like every week. So I mean, one thing that happened I remember that was like really terrible is like to save money. Basically, we used to be uh, we were like a pretty big. Um, video streaming startup, right? We were like the, you know, one of the biggest live video sites out there as Justin TV and it was like um, extremely expensive, right? Live video is expensive to do. And so we used to, we would put it on like Amazon and EC2, AWS, which is what most startups use now. But then I remember one time in 2007, the AWS team called us and was like, you need to like turn down your bandwidth because it's like too much for us. I think they've probably solved that problem right now. But at the time we were like, oh, okay. Like, so we started figuring out what we could, you know, actually use. And we were too expect we couldn't use a CDN because we didn't have enough money. And when we went out to raise money, um, everyone except for Tim Draper and mm -hmm. a few others uh, were like, "No, we don't want to invest in video. Video is a bad investment." And so during this time, all these video startups died, like Rever, uh, Vio, all these you know U.S. video startups. Just like they went, they couldn't raise any more money, and they actually went out of business. But we survived, and we largely survived by like trying to be like a cockroach and spending as little money as possible. Um, and to do that, we ended up building our own data centers, which actually turned out to be this good competitive advantage in the end, but at the time was just like this tremendous amount of work. Like I remember we moved from one data center to another and the whole team contributed. We like went in vans that we rented to our data center to like unplug the server, took the site down, unplugged all the servers, put them in our vans, drove to this other place, assembled everything, and this was like now 12 hours in from like we started at like 11 and this was like, or maybe now it was like eight in the morning. And then we turn, press the button and like the site didn't work. Like people were like, my team was like, I remember some of our employees were like passed out on the floor. They were like so tired, exhausted. And we were just like, what do we do? And you know, spend the next five hours in the data center. I don't know if you've ever been in a data center, but it's super dry in there, right? It's loud, it sounds like fans. It's like a stressful environment on our computers trying to bring the site back up. And it was like times like this. Like there was another time our, our, I remember um, the power, like one of our breakers shorted in the data center and someone had to drive there. It was 5 a.m. on Sunday morning. Everyone was drunk. Like there was no, <laughs> like I woke up to the emergency, like someone calling me and I was like, I don't, who's going to go there? Like, I don't know. Like this, like eventually I think my co-founder Kyle got up. He lived in like the closest and he actually got up and, and went. I called him and he was, he was still drunk too. So it was, you know, it was like very stressful constantly. Mm -hmm. There was like, those aren't like horrific incidences, but like it was, you know, our site would go down all the time. People were on call like 24 seven for like two right. years. Another, another one that I actually liked that was kind of fun, but it was stressful at the time was, um, so my, my co-founder Kyle went on vacation to Ta Lake Tahoe and he was the only one who knew how the video system worked at the time. 
you know, we didn't have, you know, people ask what your bus number is. Your bus number is like, if someone gets hit by a bus, like how many people have to get hit by a bus before you like, it, there's complete system failure. And our bus number was one, right? So like if Kyle was gone, the video system had no, like we didn't, know how to, we didn't know how to fix it. So of course he left, he was in Tahoe, the video system is down. He's like, I'm, he was, before he left, he's like, I'm gonna have my cell phone, laptop, whatever, right? So video system goes down, we start calling Kyle, no answer. Uh, you know, like bus of one just so we hit. Yeah, <laughs> we're like Emmett. What do you? You know, you figure it out. Who's my? Uh, you know, uh, my other co-founder is the CTO, and he was like trying to figure it out, but you know, we, he didn't really know the system that well. So um, we're like, how do we get in touch with him? He's like, we called him like ten times. You know, like this calls fifteen, right? Like we were calling him like every thirty seconds for like twenty minutes, and like no response. So we we ended up. Um, Michael, my co-founder Michael, had this idea. He calls Lake Tahoe. He calls a pizza place, and he's like, "Go and to this address, and ring the doorbell and tell them send one of your drivers to this address. Ring the doorbell and tell them the website is down." And the guy's like, "What kind of pizza do you want?" And he's like, "Don't make a pizza. Just go right now. I'll buy. I'll pay for like a large cheese pizza or whatever. Like I'll just pay you. You just send your driver and go." And they're like, "You don't want a pizza?" <laughs> so he eventually communicated. Go to this address. So the guy goes. And rings the doorbell. And Kyle wakes up. He was taking a nap or something in the other room with his cell phone, at, like you know, across the room from him. Wakes up, and the guy's like, "The website's down." He like gets up and fixes it. Um, and then he calls us, and he's like, "You guys should have sent a pizza." Like, I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, we had to like. There were a lot of times when it was just like we had to think on our feet right. to, to make things happen. Yeah. Um, and you know. I, I really appreciate hearing those stories because it, there's a lot of scrappiness to it yeah. and a lot that's not really sexy about entrepreneurship. But here you are s sitting where you are yeah. having uh, a, your company was acquired for about a billion dollars and you've had multiple successful companies. And so I'm kind of curious, having been through the slog, what do you think it was that sort of set you apart that was able to make you um, prepared enough to cross the desert? Well, like I said out there, I think there are two things that really contributed to us not giving up. Um, the first one is that we had great co-founders who, you know, even though we've argued about a lot of things, like they're very talented and like during the times, you know, entrepreneurship's like a roller coaster, right? And mm. during the good thing about having co-founders is when you're like at the bottom, you're in the valley, like maybe they're not quite at the bottom. They're like, maybe they're peaking, probably not. They're probably like, you know, going down or going up. And so you kind of like aggregate enough like to be like, kind of content enough or like not depressed enough to like stick with it, right? Mm -hmm. I wanted to quit Justin TV pretty much every year during the summer. I remember summer's super depressing time for me. And because everyone else was like out going at the beach and 4th of July having fun and I'd be like working, right? So like every summer I remember I was like, oh, I hate this, why am I doing this? Um, and you know, I think the co having great co-founders who are there for you emotionally, not just there like from a productivity standpoint, but they're like emotionally is like a big part of it. And the second thing is, like I said out there, I think a lot of my ego is caught up with like being an entrepreneur and giving up would have been like, oh, I'm kind of like admitting defeat. All my, co um, my classmates and friends from college were out making good money, being investment bankers and hedge fund managers and lawyers. And while they hated their lives, they at least were like, you know, kind of doing what society said you were supposed to and like actually making something of themselves. So the only thing I could do was say like, oh, well I have this, you know, the coolest job ever because I get to like run my own company and, and make my own uh, vision happen, which is like a much sexier, distorted reality than actually exists, I think. But, you know, it was kind of like giving up would have been admitting defeat and I didn't, I didn't, uh, I was too prideful to do that. So mm. I guess it worked out in the end. So now you're a partner at Y Combinator. And so you're taking a little bit of a break from companies. Yeah, a mm. long, long break. A long break. Are you going to do it again? I, I have no uh, plans to start another company right now. It's like, like I said, like starting companies is a lot of work, and I don't want to do a lot of work right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having, having crossed the desert, you know what it's really like. Yeah, now I'm at the oasis. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm living, I'm living good. I'm waiting for other people to cross the desert. Great. Great. So do you have, um, as we sort of think about wrapping up here, do you have any sort of thoughts on advice that you would share with younger folks like myself who might be crossing the desert and can't even see the oasis yet? Or well, trying to okay, so my, my big thing that I would say, and I've said repeatedly um, to people, is that 
you know, if you start something that people want, like even if it's a small number of people, the internet and especially like mobile, uh, and especially mobile internet in developing world is growing, right? It's growing so quickly that like even s things that are seem like niche things become big things over time. Twitch, you know, lots of people tried to actually create uh, video game TV channels, um, but they were focused on like one geo, right? Like by aggregating all these different, like the, the entire world, we were, you know, Twitch is now a 50 million uh, viewer a month website. And, you know, in the United States, it's, it's a fraction of that, or in Europe, it's a fraction of that, and maybe not even a big enough fraction to support kind of like a, a, you know, an offline TV channel. But um, you're able to create a lot of value by, like, building something that's, you know, focused on a niche and then, like, again, aggregating all those users who um, could use your product in that niche. And so I think that, like, even small things will grow, can grow to be really big things. And I have a lot of friends who have started companies that started off small and it looked like they were growing linearly until, like, it, you know, if you look at that early part of the curve, and then it, you know they've sh rocket shipped, uh, and they've you know they, it wasn't clear that they should stick with it in the first uh, couple of years. So I mean, I think that like persistence and really having a belief, a fundamental belief in your idea is like very important mm -hmm. um, to get to like the you know the point where you're like very you know you're actually a big website. Right. Great. Well, thank you for your words of advice and your time. We really appreciate it. I know it's ignited an interest in me and hopefully for those who have been watching. Cool. Thanks, Justin. All right, great.